Hey, how you doing? So in this video, I want to talk about knowing what you know. This is something that a lot of people have trouble with. Basically, what I'm talking about is figuring out where your talents lie, where your track record shows that you're good, and concentrate on that and then surround yourself with advisors or friend up people who know things that you don't know. Knowing what you know is something that it would seem very obvious, but so many people have this knee-jerk reaction that they should be able to voice their opinion on things they don't really know much about. This is a big mistake in software development, in business, and in life in general. So I know some people who have horrendous bad judgment abilities. Like They just make terrible judgments continuously. They're kind of like George Costanza in Seinfeld where he says, all my choices, all my judgments are terrible. And they have this great episode where he decides to do the opposite of what his instinct would be, and then his life becomes amazing. So yeah, you have to figure out in your life where your talents lie, what, uh, what you're good at, and stick to that. So if it's in software development, if you're good at front end in design, then stick to that. If you're not good at details and algorithms and uh, data structures, then avoid that. Thankfully for you guys, data structures and algorithms are not important in most development. Let me say that again because there's a lot of myths put out there by the diapered nerdling class on YouTube's. Data structures and algorithms for most of us, that means 99% of us, 99.9% .9 of us developers are not important in software development. Best practices, architectures, those things are important. Anyhow, I digress. So you have to figure out what you're good at and stick to that. On the flip side, I know people who were really good with backend stuff, detailed code, they're very detail-oriented people, but they kept trying to be designers and their design skills is, ah, you either have a designer's eye or you don't have a designer's eye. You'll know that right away. Designer eye extends beyond just making a web UI or user interface look good. You'll see it in the way you design your, your the furniture you pick or stuff. Some people just have good taste. Some people have no taste. You have to figure that out as well. Again, learn to play to your strengths. When I was boxing, uh, I discovered quickly enough that I was not good on the inside game. I was not a good inside fighter, but I was pretty good on the outside. So whenever I would spar, I would always stick and try to force the fight to be an outside game so that I could play my strengths as opposed to my weakness. So don't make the mistakes so many people make and try to do stuff that you're not good at. That's a waste of your time. At best, you're gonna come, come out with mediocre results, right? So when you're entering in the coding game for the first time, as I teach in my mentoring group, links below, you have to go in there, learn your fundamentals, get what I call the nerd eyes. The nerd eyes is basically your ability to understand the technology landscape. So then you can start making intelligent decisions about what type of work you're going to do. So first of all, you have to consider what you're good at. What you're typically good at means you're, it's easy for you. You're probably going to enjoy. And um, that will help you identify where to focus your efforts in terms of coding. So what I do is I teach the broad fundamentals so that you're job ready and get your foot in the door. I use the web stack mostly because it's so offer so many options in terms of choices. Anyhow, so keep that in mind. So when you're going through life, and you're trying to decide, for example, I just did a bunch of renovations in this condo here of mine. I'm not a plumber, you know, so I'm not going to try and figure out how to do plumbing. You know, I'm not a, uh, an expert plasterer. I could do it, but I had to hire somebody because they could do a better job than me, you know. Uh, same thing with uh, ripping out uh, the old kitchen and you know I hired people to, I guess I could do it but they have the tools and you know they've done it many times and have them do that why why waste my time working on projects where my skills are substandard I should put my time uh, towards skills that I'm actually decent at or best or, or better yet what I'm really good at I'll leave you with this final tip I find that Throughout the years, well, decades now, Uncle Steph's getting pretty old. I found throughout the decades that people tend to discount 
the skills that they're naturally good at because they assume that if it's easy for them, it must be easy for everybody else. The fact of the matter is, many a times, what's easy for you is, is hard for others. And that's your talent. Play to your strengths. It will serve you well and long. All right, I hope this makes sense. And uh, thanks for watching the video. I'm Uncle Steph. That's what they call me. So that's I'm taking on that name. We'll talk soon. Yeah, links below for my solo learn courses and my mentoring program.